Yeah, that's how playing Resident Evil Zero feels in a nutshell. Oh, I see. You're with stars. Resident Evil Zero is a case of trying to fix what isn't broken. Changes are made to the classic Resident Evil formula. However, they created more frustrations than challenges. The word unnecessary pops up in my mind when playing through it in regards to the plot. Rebecca Chambers gets the short end of the stick here as her only starring role in the series. Although if rumors are true, that may change in the near future. This is the title I rank at the very bottom of the mainline Resident Evil titles. It does have moments where the changes in the formula works well, but that's the exception and not the norm. The series known for its replayability, this isn't the first one I'm going to be deciding to play, if at all. For the video here, I'm playing the PC HD remaster and I made use of the door skip mod. In its beginnings, Resident Evil Zero was supposed to be on the Nintendo 64. It was initially announced in early 1999. Now you know somewhere out there, there's a playable build, just like the Resident Evil 1.5 that fans eventually found. In 2020, there were some large Nintendo and Capcom leaks. However, nothing regards the N64 version of Resident Evil Zero. I love to give that a spin for curiosity's sake. It sounds about 50% was done before development switched to the GameCube. The main reason for developing on the N64 as opposed to a PlayStation was due to the cartridge format. With no loading time, switching between two characters could be instantaneous. They initially wanted to do something like this with the original Resident Evil. However, the tech made it not feasible. Another major change would be no item boxes. However, the team was struggling to get everything onto the N64 cartridge. With the announcement of the GameCube in mid-2000, the team switched Resident Evil Zero over to the GameCube. The game design and plot remained mostly the same from the prior version. Noboro Sugimura, writer of Resident Evil 2 and Code Veronica, returned to pen the story. Up until this point in the series, past titles have gone through a number of iterations before they ended up in their final state. Beyond the change in hardware, the overall plan and design for Resident Evil Zero didn't change much. Although seeing how it turned out, maybe it could have used a few more iterations. And with the change in hardware, the game received a notable visual upgrade along with getting cutscenes. When switching to disc format, one of the biggest challenges they faced was having the switching of characters remain as short as possible. They did manage to pull this off. It is an impressive technical feat, especially when you're in one room and switch to a character in another. July 23rd, 1998. Train is heading through Raccoon Forest. Suddenly, some weirdo is shown singing atop a mountain. Train is attacked by leeches. I mentioned in my video on Code Veronica that the series started to go in a more silly direction. Despite the GameCube era of titles going back more in a darker direction, this really stands out. I could have seen something like this in A Devil May Cry, but here it's an odd fit. Within the series, this character would have had a better fit in Code Veronica, tone-wise. Two hours later, the Bravo Team of Stars is helicopter inbound to investigate murders on the outskirts of Raccoon City. On the Bravo Team is our protagonist, Stars rookie and basketball extraordinaire Rebecca Chambers. An engine failure causes the helicopter to crash. Nearby vehicle is found. Its prisoner, Lieutenant Billy Cohen, sentenced to death, cannot be found. Rebecca finds the nearby train and enters. The door to safety is shut, and there is no turning back. I mean, shouldn't she have found some of her other teammates to come investigate with her, at least? Investigating the train, Rebecca is attacked by zombies. Rebecca comes across the prisoner, Billy Cohen, on the train. Billy. Lieutenant Cohen. So, you seem to know me. Been fantasizing about me, have you? Billy proposes that they work together to escape, and after initial refusal, Rebecca accepts, and away we go. While this is the HD remaster, even on the GameCube version, this game still is stunning. Making use of pre-rendered backgrounds, they were able to devote that much more to the models themselves. These pre-rendered backgrounds are still fantastic. They're just full of life and little details. And you know what? I'm surprised the style hasn't been copied as much by indie developers. The pre-rendered PS1 look is a common aesthetic approach amongst indie games. I'd love to see some indie titles, if feasible, do something more along these lines. In regards to her appearance, Rebecca has a bit of an overall compared to the GameCube version. Her facial shape is a bit different. She also decides to put on some mascara before starting her day here. There is a mod you can get if you want to make her look close to her initial GameCube appearance. There are some other inconsistencies with Rebecca here, but we'll talk more about that later. Music is the usual great stuff you can expect from the series, although I find it one of the lesser titles on that front. As far as the save themes go, I rank it closer to the bottom. And don't get me wrong, it's still good, but it doesn't hold up compared to other tracks from other games in the series. On the gameplay front, there's two major tweaks to the classic formula here, and to mixed results. Firstly, there's the lack of item boxes. However, you can now drop items and leave them where you want. This can be very handy in certain situations. For example, say you have a herb in a full inventory. If you're playing as Rebecca, who can mix them, you could drop an item, pick up and combine the herbs, and then pick up the other item. No need to return to an item box. 
Items will be marked on your map of where you dropped them, and it's very handy. But the thing is, it just creates more frustration than challenges. If you're like me, the main hall in the mansion here will serve as your main spot for dropping off your items. Eventually to the point where I had so much stuff in here that I actually had to store some stuff in other rooms because it wouldn't let me store anymore. It really adds frustration instead of a different approach. To note, they did initially plan for the first 1996 title to have item boxes not be interconnected. This is a mode they added in the Resident Evil remake for a challenge. And you know what? That probably would have been a better fit here, because sometimes it's really annoying to just look at the ground and try and find the item that you're looking for. I wish I actually kept track of the time, but I do feel I spent far more time in sorting through my inventory here than other Resident Evil titles. The other major tweak to the classic formula is controlling two characters, and not in a co-op way like future titles would try out. The AI will control the other character, or you can control the other character with the other analog stick. You can have them follow you, or stay, shoot approaching enemies, or refrain from firing. Both have six inventory slots. Becca takes far less damage, but can mix herbs. Billy tanks far more damage, has access to a lighter, and can move boxes. There's also some cases where only Rebecca can use an item, such as that goddamn hookshot, or can get through small spaces. There's also cases where a certain character's piano chops are better than the other. Still, at least Rebecca has a leg up on Chris, who can't read music. That said, I still mostly played as Rebecca, since I don't really care for Billy as a character. But more on that later. As I mentioned earlier, it was impressive how you could switch back and forth between characters, even if in different rooms, without loading times. Sure, on a PC now it's no problem, but with the tech they used at the time, it must have been quite a challenge to switch from Nintendo 64 to GameCube and maintain this. There are some interesting scenarios in the game where we will be separated in order to progress forward. You know, they always say in tabletop land to not split the party, but some of the best portions here in Resident Evil Zero are when the party is split here. Granted, survival horror is much different than tabletop role-playing games, but there still is a lot of frustration with this two-character setup. If you're like me, I tend to save my ammo and simply run around enemies, unless they're really annoying enemies, which we'll get to shortly. I'll either juke around them or knife them and run, and that's pretty easy to do when you're control of one character. However, if your partner is following you, it's easy for them to get caught and receive damage. Of course, you could set them to fire, but there's a reason I'm bypassing enemies. I'm trying to save ammo. This is also why I tended to control Rebecca more. If Billy was hit by an enemy, he could at least tank a lot more damage. Now, you can't control the other character with the other analog stick. The issue is that it's a hassle when you're trying to navigate the main character you're controlling at the same time. In many cases, in order to navigate a room and evade enemies, here's what I do. Just outside that room, I get the other to stay. I then navigate through the room, and then switch to the other character to do the same. When it comes to bosses, save for one encounter, the game luckily keeps it to just one character. Frustrating is a word that comes up often when I think about Resident Evil Zero. So on that note, let's look at some of the enemies. There's a number of returning enemies here, along with some unique ones, and some of the most frustrating in the series, and maybe the most frustrating. One of those being the Eliminators, aka those annoying little monkey shits. They hit hard and they hit fast, and for small creatures can take a fair amount of damage. It's really easy to get caught in a stun lock where a couple of them will constantly swipe away at you. Plus, they are tough to dodge. Luckily, they disappear mostly in the later sections of the game, but good lord are they frustrating. There's also the Leech Men. While not as frustrating, I do hope you save your Molotov cocktails or your napalm rounds for these ones. Otherwise, they take quite a while to take down. And I also hate that damn music that plays when you enter a room with them. Let's take a look at the areas we'll go through, along with talking about the plot, so spoilers ahead. Although, eh, the plot isn't really much to write home about here. Like pretty much every Resident Evil title, Zero puts its best foot forward with the train section. It's a unique setting for a Resident Evil title, for horror titles in general. While it doesn't have the level of looping level design, there's still a few shortcuts which we can open up. There's also challenges with having these narrow spaces to either deal with or evade the zombies. The visuals do a great job in the outdoor sections of the train, giving weight to the train's movements. There's a section where Billy and Rebecca will be separated in which items can be swapped via service lift. There's a nice sense of progression to find the item required to get the other character out of the space they're stuck in. The train section here makes the best use of the game's two main switches to its gameplay. We're not swamped with items just yet. The scorpion boss here is pretty uninspired. I find scorpions one of the more unsettling creatures around, but I felt like it didn't really mesh well in the world of Resident Evil. And just in general, the bosses here in Zero are very uninspired. They're mostly just large creatures. 
And then there's the bane of everyone's inventory, the hookshot. You know, I think with the removal of this single item, this game would have a much better reputation than it does. Firstly, the hookshot takes up two item slots. Rebecca and Billy both have six slots each. Rebecca is the only one who can make use of it. And you only need it three times in the game. It's another frustration with how much room it takes up and how little you use it. Especially later on when you need to backtrack for it if you're not aware you need to bring it. Couldn't we just have bits where Billy boosts Rebecca? There's one part in the game where Billy does this to let Rebecca through a vent. I'm almost there. I'm glad I could be of service. We have to split up again to get the train to stop with a limited amount of time. It's a nice use again of splitting the party and building tension with that timer. After the train derails, we end up in the Umbrella Training Facility, which is another mansion. Before we get to that, we get some scenes with Birkin and Wesker scheming in the backgrounds. Opera Man returns to sing and create a Dr. Marcus with his leeches. Dr. Marcus was one of the founders of Umbrella that was murdered a decade prior. So yep, here's another mansion to explore, except it's nowhere near as intricate and well designed as the Spencer Mansion. It feels really uninspired. It's a letdown considering how enjoyable the train section was. The main haul for me was my item storage, dropping tons of stuff here to come back for when I needed. As I mentioned earlier, at some point I had to drop it off in another room because I had too much stuff in there and the game wouldn't do more. Again, why couldn't there just be an item box? At the very least, if they didn't want to do interconnected, they could have separate ones. We get into that usual Resident Evil flow, explore, deal with enemies, find items to use elsewhere, solve some light puzzles, unlock some shortcuts. We'll have some sections where only one character can go forward, and we'll have to unlock a door from the other side to meet up again. Again, it's making decent usage of controlling two characters here. I've always enjoyed that sense of relief that comes from unlocking shortcuts. It hits a bit different here once you reunite with your partner. Then there's the centipede boss. Ooh, a centipede. Yeah, again, doesn't really feel inspired. The centipede takes Rebecca hostage here, so it's just a case of needing to control one character. There's a puzzle here of accessing two terminals out of numerous ones to unlock an item, although it's just looking at an image and moving to the right place. So in regards to the puzzles of Resident Evil Zero, it does feel like a missed opportunity that they didn't really take advantage of having two characters to control. There's a number of these puzzles where you just need one character to deal with. There's a lot of notes here that will give some background to the research into the viruses that's going on here and the conflict among the higher ups at Umbrella. We'll eventually make our way down to the basement. This is the part where Billy will boost Rebecca up to get to another room. As I mentioned earlier, I wish they just did this instead of having the hook shot for other areas. We get one of those classic flip the switches and get into this range puzzle. Those little fuckers, the eliminators are unleashed and we have to get Billy to help Rebecca. And then like the suffering Steve, I actually care about making sure we help her out. Afterwards, Rebecca's radio works again, gets back in contact with Bravo, but when asked, mentions she hasn't found Billy. Let's talk more about this dynamic between Billy and Rebecca. In the series full of mostly likable characters, Billy is just kind of there. Plus, I don't really like his stupid tattoo. It doesn't really take advantage of its premise with them. Someone on the side of the law forced to work with someone on the wrong side of the law. Or at least that's how things first appear. There's a lot that we can work with here. There could be some nice conflict, but that lasts all about two minutes at the beginning of the game before they start working together. And that's pretty much it. There's no real conflict in the game from that point on. I know they're dealing with other forces here, but there was more they could have done with this. There's good bonding done through the gameplay, through helping one another, splitting up to help the other, reuniting, saving the other. But here's also the reason that Billy is just kind of there. We learn about this past, this whole thing about killing 23 people, and that's not being the case that he was framed. The thing is, it's not related to anything else that goes on here. You know, since this incident with him happened in Africa, there could have been a possibility to tie these events to Resident Evil 5. Granted, that title was still years away, and who knows when that idea for setting things in Africa popped up. Still, it's unrelated to anything that really happens here. We just happened to come across him. They did something like, say, Umbrella framed him, then he has more of a tie with the plot. Maybe he could be seeking revenge while Rebecca tries to talk him back. That isn't much, but he would have a much stronger tie to the plot as a result. While they spend a lot of time together, they don't talk to one another besides cutscenes, and there's no real party banter, if you will, beyond basic Roger or OK. I'm not saying that they need to banter every 10 seconds. Due to the way the game designed, it would be harder to do. Compare this to something like Resident Evil 5, where it's much easier to script out where Shev and Chris would talk to each other within the game. I feel games mostly just harp on too much instead of letting things breathe, but here it would have been better use of some of that quiet time to help build their relationship with one another. 
After some more puzzle solving, exploration, and item collection, we'll unlock the next section, the laboratory. And don't forget to bring that hookshot because you'll need it, else have fun dealing with those little eliminator fuckers to where you left it as you backtrack. Again, I would enjoy this game a lot more if this item never existed and you could just get Billy to boost Rebecca. And then we deal with the bat. Now, this could be a very annoying fight, but there is a quick trick to cheese him really quickly with staying him over and over with a grenade launcher so he could die within seconds. I should know that even when I know how to cheese this one, it seems weird looking back at my footage of why I'm playing as Rebecca here. We have a choice for this boss fight of who we could play as. Hell, you could just leave the room if you want as well. I guess after playing the earlier titles, I'm used to the lady having the grenade launcher and the gent having the shotgun. So if you don't know this little cheese tactic, this fight can be very annoying with all the other little bats flying around. And on that note, let's see how a certain streamer did with this fight. A streamer that before being kicked off Twitch earned the most donation income per subscriber. How did our good friend at the channel, Darkside Phil, deal with this fight? <laughs> Now he's hurt. Fuck this bullshit. Suck my fucking dick. Stupid shit. I did it. Yes. Fuck. Oh. Now to note, he got trolled into playing the game on hard mode, which makes this even funnier. Oh, Phil, <laughs> never change. Oh, and I recently got blocked by Phil on Twitter. He didn't like my WWE champions tweet at him. I'm not sure if it's a greater honor to be blocked by Hideki Kamiya or the cockroach of the internet. Descending downward to the lab, this is my favorite part beyond the train. One last use of the hook shot. However, the game doesn't tell you that it's the case. It's not like keys where it says you don't need it anymore. So if you don't know it, you could still be spending the rest of the game worried about needing it again, so you keep it near or in your inventory. But beyond that, this is another case of splitting the party. We'll use another service lift to move items back and forth to progress forward. It's a lot like the train at the beginning on that front. In a case of cutscene incompetence, Billy gets knocked away by one of those annoying little monkeys. As Rebecca will take the tram car to the marshalling yard, and hey, this place looks familiar. Yep, yep, this is RE territory we're getting into here. But no, she says there's no point in checking in these areas. It's such a cock tease. I'd love to see some of these areas in this engine, or at the very least say it's locked down instead of there's no point. How do you know that, Rebecca? You know, she could have made some discoveries here with her research that could have possibly prevented what happened a couple months down the line. Now Rebecca gets to be all heroic here and take down a tyrant single-handedly. Which brings up one of the largest issues I have with Rebecca's character here. When it comes to plots, there's so much you can nitpick about various areas for good reasons. There's tons you can nitpick about the plot here. I mean, just the marshalling yard here. The geography of how we got here and its location, it feels a bit off when compared to Resident Evil 2. However, I don't think there's any worse sins you could commit to when writing when it comes to character inconsistency. And there's plenty of that with Rebecca here and in Resident Evil Remake. Hell, for whatever reason, there are also different voice actresses. I can handle this on my own. And don't call me little girl. Are you okay? Want me to treat your wounds? If the games were released a long time frame apart, I can understand. There were just under an eight month window between these two releases. In an interview, Shinji Mikami said he didn't like Rebecca, feeling that she was submissive and not independent. That's not really the case here in Zero. Sure, she did get saved by Billy a couple times and they worked together, but she held her own against the goddamn tyrant. Not just one, but two. Although in the second one, we could have Billy around as well. So what's going on in the remake when she's carrying at a hunter? Did she run out of ammo? Did she not understand the idea of item boxes and that dropping items on the ground doesn't work in that other mansion? Did not having Billy around cause her to lose her confidence? Sure, she went through hell the night before and she's probably not in the best space physically or mentally. And yes, I know this is a moment that's a carryover from the OG version of Resident Evil. So why didn't Shinji take advantage of this? After all, he did direct the remake and oversaw Zero as well. So why not take the time to make Rebecca a more consistent character? Oh, and why didn't she bring up the Chris's stuff that happened the night before? 
I mean, I know there's a lot going on, but talking about the Opera Man, all the research leeches, wouldn't that be good to know? I guess maybe it comes up later. It's one of those reasons that the word unnecessary keeps popping up in my mind in regards to the overall plot here in Resident Evil Zero. The last section here is the treatment plant. I do really like this puzzle of trying to lay up all these nodes. It takes a few tries, but not overly frustrating. I felt a sense of pride and accomplishment from it. We'll eventually get Billy back in a pretty understated scene. You think there'd be a bit more fanfare here? Then there's this box puzzle here that took me a bit longer than I care to admit. Now, in past titles, these box puzzles have been mostly filler or fairly brain dead, so I give them credit here for one that took quite a bit longer. All a bit more exploration, some puzzles, a few more cases of separation, these stupid frogs. and we'll eventually reach Opera Man, whose surprise is actually Dr. Marcus. I really cracked up when I first heard him with that voice acting. Dr. Marcus? No, you can't be. What's going on? <laughs> Ten years ago, Spencer had me assassinated. For this and Remake, they were good voice acting for the most part. They didn't go really into cheesy territory too much, although here it feels a bit off considering they went with a darker tone. That's why I mentioned this opera singing character could have worked in something more lighthearted like Code Veronica or something like Resident Evil 4, but with the darker tone here it just feels right out of place. With Dr. Marcus here, yeah they didn't really bring their A-game with the acting or the plot or his character. Now I will have my revenge on Umbrella and the world will burn in an inferno of hate! <laughs> You'll pay for what you've done! We'll see which one of us is gonna die! <laughs> and then there's this really frustrating boss fight because this is the only one where we have to control both characters. You know, there's a reason that up till now that they've made sure to keep it separate on that front in regards to boss fights. And luckily in the final fight, we are separated again. And with that, we escape, Rebecca heads to the Spencer Mansion in the distance, taking Billy's dog tag, telling others that Billy is dead. Officially, Lieutenant Billy Cohen is dead. Yeah, I'm just a zombie now. So Billy goes somewhere, probably to the island where Resident Evil characters who just randomly disappear. I'm sure Carlos is there, Sheva's there as well. So that is Resident Evil Zero. In a series full of replayability, I don't ever envision myself another day after this going, man, I should really replay Zero. First three titles, no problem. Code Veronica, eh, not my first choice. Four, hell yeah. Five, not as enthusiastic but would. Seven, Village, sure, although I could skip the cutscenes in seven. Maybe at this point the formula was starting to get a bit played out, but it's also made tweaks to the formula that didn't really need fixing. So instead of creating a different set of challenges, they ended up creating more frustrations instead. I'm always one for developers to mix things up or try out a different formula, and for that I do give zero props. It's just that these switches did more harm than good. Now, on this channel, I have two more mainline titles to cover, one of them being Resident Evil 6 and the other being Resident Evil 3 Remake. 6 is a title I only played for like an hour to friends plays back around its release, in Remake, I've played the demo, but didn't get really around to buying it until recently. I know about Six and its reputation, but it also has its fans with its crazy gameplay. So unless I really despise it, I don't see it being ranked lower than zero at the bottom of the mainline titles. It'd be a little over two years later until the next mainline title comes along, that being Resident Evil 4. That was a title that shook the industry and changed the flow of Resident Evil and survival horror, for better or for worse, for a number of years. Resident Evil Zero wasn't one of those titles. And just comparing this to Remake, which came out eight months before, there's a stark contrast in the quality between the two. On the plot front, nothing really feels essential or necessary to know prior to the events of the first title. And it's a shame that up to now this is only Rebecca's starring role. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this might change with the rumors of Revelations 3 starring Rebecca. I know you love your thumbs up, Rebecca. This gets a so-so gesture for me. Hopefully you get another shot at a leading role again.